Hi, everybody. Welcome to Finding Your Rec Sports. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Lexi. I'm a Senior Assistant Director for Sport Programs and Development. And I am very happy to be joined by a few of my Rec Sports colleagues today. We'll be introducing them as they share information with you, and we'll have plenty of time to ask, for you to ask questions today. Those of you who are joining us live, you can do that by using the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. And if you're watching this as a recording, you can always reach us by emailing recsports at umich.edu. If you're looking to stay active and be well on campus, you've come to the right place. Our department's here to offer you different ways to work out, compete, learn, explore, and have fun. Today, we'll cover the basics of who we are, what we do, and how you can get involved so you can find your rec sports. Everything we talk about today is available to you on our website, which is recsports.umich.edu. You can also find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and we have our own rec sports app. Before we get into the specifics about our department, let's talk about why your well-being is so important to us. I'm going to welcome Sibby, our program manager for club sports and esports, to tell us more. Thanks, Lexi. College can give you a lot of freedom and flexibility, and that's why now is the best time to figure out what you need in order to be the best version of yourself. We might be best known for helping you with your physical well-being, but we're here to support your total wellness. Research shows that physical activity can improve your mental health and help you do better in the classroom. Our department is a social place to find new friends, to play sports with a team, or get involved with your favorite yoga class. And as one of the biggest student employers on campus, we offer a place where you can gain desirable skills while having fun and getting paid. We care about making you feel at home, and we believe that Rec Sports is the place where you can find what wellness means to you. If you want to explore more about our eight dimensions of well being further, check out wellbeing.studentlife.umich.edu for on campus events, virtual resources, and more. Thanks, Sibby. One of the most critical parts of creating success and happiness on campus is finding and building your community. Next up, I'd like to welcome Ben, our Assistant Director of Facility Rentals and Special Projects, to talk about the spaces where you can find your rec sports community. That's right, Lexi. Our rec sports community is at the core of everything we do. And we like to think we have a little something that everyone can enjoy. A good place for us to start is with our facilities and fields where so many of our activities happen. Rec sports operates three gyms or what we call comprehensive facilities on campus. We have the North Campus Rec Building, the Central Campus Rec Building, and the Intramural Sports Building. As long as you're taking at least one credit of classes, then you have access to our facilities with your M card or with the Rec Sports app. Once inside, you can shoot hoops, lift weights, or use cardio equipment. You can even meet up with your friends for a pickup game of racquetball or volleyball. Uh, two of our facilities have indoor pools uh, with lap, lap swimming available. Uh, we also have two indoor running tracks uh, and we even have sports equipment that you can check out. If you're wanting to get outside, we have three main fields on campus. Mitchell Field has a combination of turf and grass fields and is located on North Campus. These fields are prim primarily used for intramural and club sports activities. Palmer Field is on Central Campus near many of our residence halls. Here you can use our running track, play tennis, basketball, or toss a Frisbee on a nice day. And then we have Elbel Field on South Campus. Intramural sports are also played here. We have softball diamonds, sand volleyball courts, and more grass to play on at Elbel. What's really cool about all these spaces is that they're available to rent. So if you're part of a student organization and want to use one of our spaces, we can help. So no matter where you're at, it's easy to find some friendly folks for a pickup game or jump in on a workout. You can find more information about all each of these facilities and their hours in the top bar of our website. Now I'm gonna hand it off to our Assistant Director of Facilities, Malcolm, to talk about the many fitness options we have available. Thanks, Ben. Whether you're looking for a heart pumping Zumba class or a personal trainer to keep you on track, Rec Sports offers a variety of fitness options. First, our Group X program offers over 50 classes each week during the school year that include Pilates, yoga, Zumba, and total body strength. Our engaging instructors and supportive class environments provide the perfect combination of motivation and fun. 
You can take classes in one of our facilities on campus, or we also have virtual classes that you can join from the comfort of your room. Right now, we have two passes for students, one for in-person classes and one for virtual classes. Both can be bought on our website for $35 and get you unlimited access to our schedule, which you know, is a pretty good deal. Another fitness program we have is small group training. In groups of three to six, you can dive deeper into a given fitness application with the help of a fitness instructor over the course of six to eight weeks. We've offered classes like beginner ballet, Bollywood, hip hop 101, and yoga for runners. This is a great way to make friends with similar fitness interests and have the support of an intimate group. Finally, we offer personal training services for students who might be looking to make gains in the gym or just find a consistent workout routine. We have packages just for students and you can even train with a friend. If you'd like to get started, you can submit a request on our website. While our fitness offerings are strong, we have some options for all sport lovers out there. Hey, Sylvie, can you tell us who puts the sports and rec sports? I've been waiting, waiting for that joke, Malcolm. Uh, <laughs> while not all of us are destined to be star athletes, we have some ways for y'all to keep your dreams alive through programs offered through our competition section on our website. First off, we have 30 club sport teams you can join while you're a student at Michigan. We have everything from water polo to ice hockey, weightlifting to climbing. The options are endless. Our club sport athletes get to wear the block M and compete, compete against other universities while traveling nationally and internationally. In terms of commitment level, many clubs require tryouts, weekly practices, competitions, and pay club dues. We recommend checking out Festival or the Rec Sports Expo to chat one-on-one -on -one with any of our club teams this fall. If you're looking for a fun way to compete against your friends on campus, try out intramural sports. We offer multiple sports to play each semester. We have your traditional sand volleyball, 3v3 soccer, 4v4 flag football, but then we also have tricycle polo, <laughs> mini golf, and spike ball, and many other sports coming up this fall. You can play all of the sports for $15 or just get a single roster pass for $8. You can pull a team together with your friends or sign up as a free agent to be on a team with new people to meet. It's such a great way to meet new people and new friends on campus. Fall registration starts September 1st and you can sign up on our website. And for all my gamers out there, this is, this is where I'm talking to you. Our growing Michigan eSports program offers a chance for you to compete in League of Legends, Overwatch, Rocket League, and many other games. But if you're anything like me and you're more into playing the game for fun and playing with your friends, this is also the spot for you. Students can follow our Twitch channel or join our Discord server to learn more. But there's so much more within our department and I'm gonna hand it off to Ben to talk about how you can get outside with our Adventure Leadership Program. Thanks, Sibby. Our Adventure Leadership Program has two components. One that focuses on team building and another that focuses on outdoor trips. Our Adventure Education Center located near North Campus has a high ropes course climbing tower, and low elements where we use fun, interactive activities to get people laughing while they explore team dynamics, challenge the status quo, and discover new ways to communicate, collaborate, and work better together. If you're part of a student organization, this could be a great option to really get to know each other and how you work. On the trip side of the house, we offer single day and multi-day outdoor excursions, both near and far. You can join us to go hiking, backpacking, kayaking, and even dog sledding or snowshoeing in the winter. And no experience is ever necessary because we have experienced trip leaders to show you the way. If going out on your own is more your style, we have equipment rentals at our rental center. We have backpacks, sleeping bags, tents, and more, so you're fully equipped for your next adventure. If you wanna get a jump start on your travel, we've got you covered. Our first scent trips are especially designed for incoming first year students. Join us August 22nd through the 26th as we go backpacking on North Manitou Island in Lake Michigan. Students who come on the trip will be able to move into their residence hall early, so check it out. It's a fun way to meet other incoming first year students and see the beautiful state of Michigan. Trip details and pricing can be found on our website. Thanks, Ben. There's so much you can do to participate with our facilities and programs. 
But as we mentioned earlier, we're also one of the largest employers of students on campus. Malcolm is going to tell us a little bit about work opportunities within Rec Sports. Thanks, Lexi. Working for Rec Sports is one of the best jobs on campus. We offer flexible hours and locations to work, leadership opportunities, and a fun social environment to work in. We have membership services assistants that greet students coming into our buildings and lifeguards that keep our swimmers safe. We hire lots of intramural sports officials to run our games and group X instructors and personal trainers to run our fitness programs. Our adventure leadership interns lead trips and facilitate our team building programs. And we also have a pretty cool marketing team that creates social media content and represents rec sports at events on campus. If you're interested in applying, head over to our website and check out the jobs link or go to recsports.umich.edu backslash employment. Awesome, thanks Malcolm. So we just threw a ton of information at you and we hope you heard something that really sparked your interest. As a reminder, you can learn more about what Rec Sports has to offer by visiting our website, downloading the Rec Sports app, and following us on social media. For the rest of our time together, we're going to answer questions from those of you joining us live. If you haven't already submitted a question in the Q&A, send them our way, and our colleague Jessa, the Assistant Director of Adventure Leadership, will make sure they get answered. If you're watching this as a recording, you can always reach us by emailing recsports at umich.edu. Awesome. Uh, so Lexi, I'm going to put a question out there that I'm going to bring a little bit more generalized uh, because I think Sibby's on it for our friend Luke here. Uh, but the question is about fees for the different club teams. Roughly, how much are they? Because uh, uh, they can't find it anywhere on the website. Sibby, do you think you could answer that for Luke? Absolutely. So we'll drop a link to the website for our club sport teams and we have all of our clubs listed. And along those clubs, they also have contact information for the student officer with that club. So all of our club sports are student run organizations and all of their dues vary depending on the sport. So feel free to reach out to them. Uh, they'll probably put you on an emailing list and let you know of events coming up and get those specific questions answered. But uh, again, like we were talking about earlier, Festival will be a great opportunity for you to go to meet face to face with these clubs and ask about hey, how much are dues or what does it look like at practice or how, what is the time commitment? Because each club operates very differently. So I'll drop the link in the chat for you, Luke, um, and for everybody to look at all of our clubs. We have a question. Is there intramural ice hockey? Anyone wanna take that one, <laughs> Lexi? Yeah, I can grab that one. Unfortunately, we do not have intramural ice hockey. Um, we have our club teams, a men's team and a women's team. And then there's uh, some opportunities for community recreation within ice hockey leagues, but uh, but I wish this would be a really cool uh, in a real sport we don't have at the moment. Um, but you can find all of the in info about which intramural sports we offer on our website. Any more questions out there? That was our whole list thus far. We'd love to hear from more of you that are in our space. Even if you wanna just know a little bit more about us and the roles that we play, the different ways that we can connect you with other student groups, particularly like how, what does it look like to be a free agent in an in intramural like sign up? What does it look like to, you know, try to be a trip leader for our adventure leadership program? We'd love to answer any of those questions for you. And I also put in the chat our, club sport specific page uh, link, but also to our general homepage of what we've been going through in this PowerPoint presentation. So feel free to cruise around and look at that. All right, some anonymous attendee, I appreciate the, 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 you know, the invitation to answer that question. What does it look like to be a free agent with uh, an in real sport? Lexi, you wanna take that one too? Yeah, sure. So we have um, the ability for folks to go in and look at lists and see who's interested in participating as a free agent. So if we have a team that's short on players, they can go directly to that list. Um, and every once in a while, there are enough people on the free agent team that are on the free agent list that a whole team could be made just of free agents. So if you go check out the intramural website or the intramural section on our website, It'll take you to our registration site, which is a different website, but there's info there on how to sign up, 
how to express your interest. You can put a little bit of info about yourself on there. And that's the, the best way to sort of put it out there that you're looking for folks to play with um, and what kind of, of team you're interested in playing on. Um, and I just saw a question about the difference between intramurals and clubs, and I'll just hit that real quick while, I'm, while I've already started. Um, so intramural sports is played Michigan students against Michigan students. So intramurals means within the walls. So we have sports that we play. We're also working on some programs that just get people together within um, a different, like a self-defense class we're going to be hosting that's all within University of Michigan. So intramurals is going to be, you're going to sign up for a sport on a particular day and time. You're going to show up and you're going to play that sport um, for a handful of weeks. And then we have playoffs and the ever coveted intramural champion shirt. If you're looking at a club sport, um, you're looking at more of something like what you would have played in high school potentially. So not all of our club sports require that you have past experience. Our fencing team is a great example. They will take anybody and teach them how to fence and get them competing. Um, but we do have some sports and, and I saw soccer mentioned. So our soccer teams do have um, tryouts, they select teams and then they play regionally and nationally against other universities. So, so clubs are intercollegiate versus intra, intramurals, which is all on campus. Awesome, Lexi, while, while you're rolling, while you're here, uh, can you talk a little bit about the general seasons of intramural sports? How long are they? When do they occur? Um, and someone also asked like, what is a free agent? So <laughs> maybe we skipped that piece of it, but like yeah, if you talk okay. about that, that would be great. You bet, you bet. So um, a free agent is somebody who doesn't already have a team put together. So when you go sign up for an intramural sport, you're basically gonna say, I have a team, there's, you know, we're, we want to play four on floor, four on four sand volleyball. There's four of us already who want to play together. We're going to go and register our team. If you don't have three other people to play with, um, one thing, if you're living in the res halls, it's great, a, a really great way to meet people on your floor to see if they have any interest in playing intramural sports with you. But a free agent is basically somebody who's saying, I want to play sand volleyball, but I don't already have a team formed. Somebody who needs an extra person, let me know. I'll join your team. So that's what a free agent is. Um, and then I already forgot the second. Oh, the seasons. Yeah. So the seasons, um, we, we will start the fall with uh, a season A, fall A. It'll be three weeks plus a couple weeks of playoffs. Um, and so that's a league you're going to play on the same day and time and location for the first three weeks. And then you'll go into a, a playoff bracket from there. Um, so we have two seasons in the fall. And then in the winter, we're planning for at least two seasons, potentially three, one of those being a little bit longer for some of our bigger sports like basketball and volleyball, which would be indoors, obviously, in the winter semester. Awesome. Thanks, Lexi. Uh, question for, I'm going to throw this your way, Malcolm. Is our gym free for all students or do you need to pay for a membership? Okay, great question. Uh, the specific answer to that is uh, the uh, membership is included in your tuition and fees that you pay. Uh, so yes, every student who has taken at least one credit on campus uh, does uh, is eligible for a membership um, and it normally is automatically applied to your student account. Awesome, thanks Malcolm. Uh, so I have a question here about our trips. Uh, on the trip that starts August 22nd, do you have kids that know no one or does everyone pretty much sign up with a friend? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're asking about our first ascent trips, which are a great way for incoming students to meet other incoming students who are interested also in just exploring Michigan a little bit more. Uh, we're taking groups out to North Manitou Island this summer uh, with an opportunity to connect uh, a bunch of first year students who typically sign up without folks that they know. This is an opportunity for them to meet new people, to go on a trip with upper level uh, U of M students or graduate students who lead our trips. Uh, so they can talk a little bit about the culture at U of M. You'll learn a lot more about the people that you're on your trip with. Uh, and you'll have this really great community that you'll get to build uh, before school even starts. Uh, plus you get to move in some of your stuff early if you're living in the residence halls. So that's kind of a nice plus there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you want to invite a friend, we'd love to have them along as long as there are spaces, but it's absolutely no problem at all if you wanna sign up on your own. Our trip leaders are trained as facilitators as well. So they're really great at help 
you know, getting people warmed up, melting that ice, letting it break so that you all can have a really good time and enjoy each other's company. And, and you know, trips and things like that, we like to call them relationship accelerators. When y'all are doing something unique like that together, uh, it's an opportunity to get to know people a lot faster than you would maybe in another environment. All right, uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Do we have any free self-defense classes? If so, how do you sign up for them? Lexi, do you maybe wanna take that one? Yep, I sure will. So um, for your reference on where to find it on the website, it's under the communities section in the partnerships section within community. It's called Empowerment Self-Defense. It is free to anybody who can get into the gym. And we haven't finalized our dates and times for those yet, but there is a link to go to our registration page. Um, I will also throw the link to this particular site in the chat here. But yes, it's taught by, it's taught in partnership with um, our, our DPSS office, our Department of Public safety and security. Um, and it's a really cool program. And we're still just kind of working out the logistics of where we're going to have it to make sure that we can do it with COVID safety in mind. Awesome. Malcolm, I got another one for you. How crowded does the gym get? How crowded do our gyms get? Uh, well, we're in a, in a tricky situation right now just because basketball, of course, recently opened last week. So we've had a higher number of foot traffic than we've had this summer so far. Uh, but typically during the semester, mornings are pretty much our quietest time, mornings and late evenings. Um, I would say the peak of our building here at IMSB in particular uh, is probably that three to six, three to seven range. Uh, and then on the tail end of both sides of that kind of uh, dwindles down. Now, that's normally the first couple of weeks of the semester because everyone's excited. Once we get a little bit further into the semester, everyone uh, realizes that we are here to study. Uh, and, and kind of turns down on the gym a little bit. So you have some more opportunities there later in the semester to use uh, the equipment at different times. But for those first couple of weeks of the semester, that peak time is mid afternoon. Thanks, Malcolm. Uh, Sibby, how are trips organized in the clubs? Yeah, so like I said earlier, all of our club sports are student run, student organized. So they're the ones that are pretty much doing start to finish every trip that they go on. Uh, we are there to be their advisor and make sure that they're following policies and procedures, um, but they're organizing and doing all the work. So it is a lot of work and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of managing skills that goes into managing your peers. And as much as we are a resource, this is also a really great opportunity for our student leaders of these clubs to learn these transferable skills. Um, but yeah, we I've seen clubs go just down the street to MSU, and I've also had clubs go to up England to play rugby. So it really uh, is everywhere. We travel all over the place, which is really cool. And all of those trips are completely run by our students um, with a little bit of help from us. Awesome. Uh, Lexi, I see that you're answering a couple of the questions in the Q&A about ice skating. Um, yeah, I think if anyone, go visiting Yoast is super fun. If you get a chance, I highly recommend it. But uh, otherwise, I'm pretty sure we don't offer any ice skating lessons unless someone else knows of, of where we can help that person find that resource. <laughs> All right, uh, one more question. Uh, Malcolm, that basketball court looks pretty shiny. Uh, did the buildings just go through any sort of renovations? Like what's, what's the deal there? Uh, yes, to answer that question directly, yes. This building was renovated uh, in 2016. Uh, so the image that you see behind me is actually uh, the basketball court area that was uh, referenced in the question. But yeah, the building was renovated in 2016. Uh, it is one of our newer facilities. Um, however, they're all equally as great. So whichever uh, facility you go to is, is up to your uh, choice. But yes, the, this building has a few more newer amenities than the other building. Uh, so feel free to stop by uh, when you're on the side of campus. Fun fact for everybody, the Intramural Sports Building was the very first dedicated recreation facility on a college campus. So we are the very first rec sports program to ever exist, although Ohio State tries to steal that title from us. We know that truly we were the first. So Malcolm just talked about the renovations. That's really a renovation on a 1928 building, and it's a really cool, cool place, cool architecture and a lot of great history there. Awesome. I think that we've answered the questions that are there in our Q&A. 
anything else that as we've been answering these panel that you'd love to just chime in on or give a little bit more insight to? Uh, I want to go back to the question about how busy the gym gets. One really great way to um, kind of avoid the unknown of kind of the capacities around weight rooms or treadmills or things like that is group exercise classes or small group training. So certainly a way to come in to the facility, get a workout in, um, but usually the group X classes don't hit capacity um, as far as like the number of people that can be in the class. And then our small group training, you are guaranteed a spot if you register for that. So you definitely have no issues with too many people in that case. Awesome. Ben, I don't think we've heard from you as far as a question. So I'd love to ask, like you're a student, what's like the first facility that you think that they should visit and what should they do there? Yeah, that's a great question, Jessa. Um, so I'm a, an alum, a U of M alum. I graduated in 2010. And um, when I was a student there, when I coming to campus, uh, the IMSB where Malcolm is stationed is by far my favorite facility. They're all great, but there's just something about the architecture, like Lexi mentioned, um, that picture behind Malcolm, there's four full basketball courts. I played basketball in high school. So I was pretty much glued to that area uh, my first year on campus. So that's definitely my favorite facility. Awesome, we've got a couple more coming in. Uh, Malcolm, can you talk a little bit about blue bus stops near the gyms? How can folks get there most easily? Sure. So I, I, I have to admit, I'm not too familiar with the bus route, but you can find uh, the actual routes on uh, the UMich website. Um, however, there is a bus stop directly outside of our front doors, probably 20 steps away from the front doors. Uh, so if you do take the bus uh, route, you can get pretty close to the building, uh, pretty close to the doors, at least, um, to come inside. Yeah, the bus system is a great way to get around campus, especially since a lot of first year students uh, end up living up on our North Campus area. Our North Campus facility is also recently renovated and absolutely lovely. Uh, so if you get a chance to hang out up there, it's it's really beautiful. Uh, anything else, panel, that we want to toss in there? I think we touched a little bit about employment and how we're one of the largest um, employers on campus, and that's true. And I think furthermore, we we definitely love being able to pay our students, and that's great. I think where we really strive is creating better humans and teaching you all skills while you're here with us that are going to benefit you if you go to more school after you graduate, a job, whatever you do after you graduate. Uh, we really focus on how we are preparing all of you as students uh, to be better humans. It's a really great experience. We truly care. And it's my favorite part of the job, and I'm sure it is for uh, all of us here on the panel um, is to be able to see y'all grow. So if you want to, yeah, come and get paid. Sure. Absolutely. But also how can we help you get to your next step, whatever it may be. Uh, it's something that we, that's part of our mission and what we really enjoy doing. So come work with us. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. We have a, a staff who's entirely dedicated to student development. Um, it's a big part of our work and in every role, whether you're a leadership facilitator, a membership, you know, membership services assistant, a club sports officer, you're going to gain so many incredible professional skills that will apply to all of the ways uh, that you'll work in the future, because it's all about learning how to be part of a team. Uh, and that's what we're really good at at Rec Sports. Uh, so I have a question about golf courses. I heard the university has two. Do you get to play those as a student? I know the answer to that one. <laughs> Everybody's like, yeah. uh, uh, like, I mean, anybody can play on them, but unfortunately you'll have to pay to play on them. So they're not part of our department, um, but they are available for folks to go and, and play just like any normal public course. And then I have a, a nice, throw in a oh, quick, go ahead, Lexi. yeah, I wanted to throw in a quick note. Um, if you are looking for bus information and you just Google UMish buses, there's going to be routes that you can go and look at. Um, the campus, the Central Campus Transit Center is the closest stop to the Central Campus Rec Building. Um, and then I think the Bursley Bates is probably the closest to the North Campus. Um, and then the Emerald Sports Building, as Malcolm said, has a stop right outside. Awesome. 
We have a question about the safety and like the protocols that we have in our gyms. What happens if I pass out when I'm working out? Do you have medical support teams there? Uh, Malcolm, you wanna take that one? Sure, great question. Uh, so our building supervisors, uh, who are student staff as well, they are CPR AED trained. Uh, so they're normally the first responders in situations like that. All of our facilities do have AEDs as well. Uh, and then of course, you know, we have the support of the Michigan hospital system uh, to send over additional resources if needed. So uh, if anything happens here inside of any of our facilities or even out on Elbow or anything of that nature, uh, you're in good hands. Um, and and our, our staff is trained to, to handle injuries and uh, from the most severe to even the, the paper cuts, uh, we deal with it all. So you're in good hands here. Yeah, and for those of you who are considering going on one of our first ascent trips, all of our trip leaders are wilderness first responders certified. So that means that they have wilderness medical skills uh, and the ability to take care of you and keep you as safe as possible while you're out there uh, taking some risks and having some fun. Uh, so just to let you know, we really are super thorough, as thorough as we can possibly be in our risk management while also giving people the opportunity to, you know, like I said, take some risks and have some fun. Um, are there ice packs to use after sports? Or what kinds of resources do students have as participants? Lexi, you wanna hit that one? Uh, sure. Um, <laughs> yes, we have ice at all of our facilities. Uh, I will say that probably the, the response that you would likely get is that they'd like to document your request for ice on an injury report. Um, so that's, that's definitely something that our student staff can offer. Um, whether that's an intramural staff or a facility staff, um, but just, I guess, know that we are, we, we document those kind of things for our own risk management protocols as well. It helps us keep our spaces safe when we know where those injuries are happening, right? So, awesome. All right. Anything else? What are folks thinking about out there? I love these questions. These are great. All right, then I'll toss them this way. Malcolm, you're at the IMSB. What is your favorite part of the IMSB to like work out in? Uh, so I have two. Uh, like Ben, the, the courts behind me have have drawn me uh, just because of, of the the scenery. We know we got these huge windows on one side. You can see Michigan Stadium on the other side. Uh, you kind of see Hoover there, so it's a great view. Uh, but I would say my second favorite is probably floor three. Uh, the treadmills facing the the Michigan field, Michigan Stadium, just overlooking South Campus. Um, it's a great view, and also you know you don't have to kind of deal with the conditions of actually being outside. Uh, so that would be my my runner up in terms of my favorite location to work out at. Awesome, yeah, and if you didn't see Lexi pointing, that's like the window that, that Malcolm's talking about is her background right now. <laughs> it's a really, really gorgeous spot. Again, that like really old building that got renovated, they preserved a lot of that structure and we we're able to keep some really gorgeous parts about um, that architecture and give us a whole new beautiful space to offer to our students. Lexi, I'm coming for you. What is your like favorite part about being on the rec sports team and working like with our staff and our students? Oh my goodness. I can't even begin to come up with a good answer because I have so many things in my brain. Let me try to, to summarize this. So I started my rec sports career as an intramural official. So like I walked on campus knowing about intramural sports played flag football, got involved in officiating. And as a second year student, I had decided that this is what I was going to do with my full-time career. So um, I'm kind of a little bit atypical in that realm. A lot of people sort of get involved and then later on decide like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. And I really love my rec sports job. So um, I think that uh, the, the best thing that we bring, and I think Sibby did a really great job of showing this, is the passion for students. And, you know, we're here to serve students to make sure that they have as great an experience as we can offer to, to be also educators. So like, you're going to learn stuff from us that you maybe wouldn't learn in the classroom, or that it's going to really complement the things that you learn in the classroom. So I think that just having the opportunity to 
to meet students and impact them in different ways. One of my very favorite things and the stuff that I keep uh, in my office is notes from students who said, I didn't even know this was an option until I started working here, or I never would have thought my, my work as an intramural official would be something that I would talk about in interviews as I go off to, to be an engineer or go to law school. So I think that that's just the, the best part. And you have a, a full-time staff in rec sports who are all committed to creating those same, same experiences for our students. Lexi, that was beautiful. Thank you for that. Uh, awesome, we have a question about food in the gym. Do we have any way for students to buy food if they're hungry or can they bring food? They're real hungry and they still wanna work out. What are they supposed to do? Malcolm. Great question. Uh, all through the facilities, NCRB, CCRB and IMSB sell concessions. Uh, the options at those concessions vary a little bit, but you have your standard protein bars, uh, I think Snickers, we have Snickers here for some reason, we have uh, Cliff bars, things like that. So um, every every facility that has one of those, and I'm pretty sure they also have vending machine too, that have you know, some of the things that aren't traditionally uh, kept in the gym, such as like potato chips and things like that. So uh, there's, a, there's an option there for, for pretty much everybody at each facility. Sibby. Uh I'm not a gamer, but I'm like curious about trying it out or like would love to like know a little bit more because it seems like things my friends are doing, but I'm really not connected to that scene. Is esports a good place for me to start? You know, Jessa, it is. And I think that you may be a gamer because you do the New York Times crossword every single day. Uh, but yeah, like gaming is such a wide spectrum where we're talking about um, like there's a big boost with mobile games and I'm sure all of you have played a game on your phone at some point in time and I think you're a gamer and it's about finding your right game so we do have 10 titles that we support um, that compete just like our club sport program does they compete against other institutions uh, around the world really and we also have a component of our esports program that's for general gamers. So if I like to play Fortnite or I like to play Animal Crossing, I can pop in there and say, hey, somebody come check out my island because I've done a lot of work and y'all need to come see it. Uh, so it's for everybody. It truly is. And it's if you have no idea how to play any of any video games, but you're interested in one, we'll take care of you. Um, come through our Discord server. If you're not familiar with Discord, uh, just shoot me an email and I'll walk you through it. It's really exciting for me to get students to where you want to be, where you want to be engaged, how you can meet friends. I've met some of my best friends playing video games. Uh, and people from around the world. So it's an incredible experience, even if you're not a highly competitive player. Uh, I've seen successful stories from even just the general um, members of our, our program. So Jessa, come through, we'll get you set up, whatever, there's, there's a game for you. There's a game for everybody. And if you don't believe me, just come on by, I'll show you, I'll prove it. Thank you so much, Sibi, I really appreciate that. All right. We do not have any open questions. So if you're sitting and listening to us right now, please feel free to drop us something in the Q&A. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna do like a quick one word whip through our panelists. Uh, and what that's gonna look like is I want you to pick one word that you would choose to describe uh, like what rec sports means to our campus and to our students. So one word, and then tell us a little bit about why you chose it. I'll take whoever's ready to start. I'm gonna go first, nobody steals mine. <laughs> uh, because we used this in our presentation, I'm gonna reiterate it's community. So, uh, you know, it's really, really easy to just look at rec sports and think treadmills and weights, uh, but we are so, so, so much more. And there's gonna be lots of different opportunities for you to come participate in stuff you're interested in and meet people and build a community while you're doing that. I'm mad that Lexi was so quick with that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use the word like futuristic and not in the way of like, we're ever going to have flying cars in our facility or anything like that. But just with all of our program that we just talked about in our department, we're, we're looking at what the trends are. We're not going to continue to do something just because we've done it forever. Uh, but we have a wellness wolf where you can come and pet dogs throughout your class uh, or class breaks and things like that. Uh, Esports, for example, is very new to the collegiate scene, but we have support because 
our students want it. And so our department, I'm really proud of to say that we're continually looking at trends and what our students are demanding and what y'all are wanting. Uh, and we're doing something about it. So yeah, even like our intramural sports, like playing mini golf, that would have never happened in my undergrad. So yeah, we're looking to the future constantly and that's really exciting. So that's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, I love that. Even like I think about in our intramurals, how innovative our staff was during, uh, you know, the pandemic and playing like spice rack bowling. And there was something, there were like all these like fun at home games that we were creating to, to still provide students the opportunity to connect. Uh, so yeah, I just really want to echo that one. Ben, Malcolm, what you got? I'll jump in, Jessa. Um, my word is going to be escape. Um, I think rec sports is an escape from Kind of the stresses of college life, um, escape from maybe your roommate, the the classroom, um, your friends, and just a place for you to get away and kind of clear your mind, um, kind of get in your zone. Um, and um, for me as a student, the gym was such a great place um, for me to kind of rebalance myself because you know it's college, it's going to be stressful, um, and it's important to take care of yourself. And um, we're here to help you do that. All right, I guess that leaves me. Uh, I think my word would be options. Um, you know, like all the panelists have said so far, um, the department gives everyone the option to, to join a host of things. And I think sometimes the, the belief is that we're just a gym that has weights and, and basketballs. Uh, but hopefully from this presentation, you've seen we offer a ton of options uh, to get involved, whether it be with club sports, whether it be with intramurals, whether it be finding a personal trainer, whether it be even working for the department in some capacity, uh, you have the option to get more involved. Um, at every turn and 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 uh, and pretty much every way possible. So uh, I think we were able to do that too for the the campus, especially during last year, is provide the option for people to get away and and escape, as Ben said, um, and to come get involved in and get away from a little bit of the noise outside. That's a good one, and just like that, Jessa said, "I'm out." So. Yeah, I think we we have answered all of the questions. We did have one last question come through about um, guest passes and what that looks like. So I dropped a link in there about um, the fees and what it takes to uh, gain a membership to our facilities, but also if you wanted to bring a guest, that's also in that link as well. We, uh, we do have options for, um, for family passes as well. So some of our grad students I know, um, or undergrads really, may have um, a significant other that, that lives with them that would like to come and, and use the facility. I think from the safety standpoint, one thing that I'd love to point out is that we don't just let anybody random come in and use our spaces um, just as a kind of a, a means to continue to provide safety for our students and also just not overrun our facilities. So anybody who comes in does have to have some sort of affiliation with us, but if you wanted to bring a friend in, I don't think we're selling guest passes again quite yet post COVID, um, but typically we do have the option for you to bring a friend in on a guest pass. All right, I got good. kicked off for a moment, but I'm back. <laughs> Thank you for, for those who covered for me while I, while I was missing. Uh, if I missed it, if I missed your question, please drop it back in the Q&A. Uh, otherwise, did we get to hear everyone's words? I, I missed it. Malcolm, just give me a hot, what was it? Uh, options was my word. Yeah, very good. I love it. The only it. person we didn't hear from was you, Jessa. <gasps> my word? Yeah. Oh, wow. Dang. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I, I always ask the question without having an answer, which is probably <laughs> like a, a bad, a bad call. But, um, I think if I were to choose a word, to describe rec sports and how, what it means for our students, I would say uh, engagement. Uh, I think we find a lot of different ways to engage our students and meet them where they're at uh, and provide them new experiences. So uh, it's a really excellent way. Like I, the question that I asked Sibby is one that's real for me. Like I, I'm not a, I, I do not currently identify as a gamer, although apparently I'm wrong since I'm a crossword puzzle player. Uh, but that's exactly what it's about. It's about um, finding new ways to engage with people, to build connections, uh, to you know, try have new experiences. Uh, and I think that's what we're really good at. 
And what's even cooler about our staff is, is we are all connect, like, while we all serve in really different roles, uh, we're so connected as a group that like, if you have a question about something and you ask me and it's about, you know, our esports program, I'm going to be able to get you to Sibby and she's going to be able to help you out. Or if it's something about our facilities, I know exactly where to point you. And I know for sure that they're going to take the best care of you as possible to get you engaged with our program. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely say engagement is where I think our rec sports organization really shines. Uh, we have a question about vaccine requirements to use the gyms or the basketball court. Can someone talk a little bit about that? Sure, I'll, uh, I'll take care of that one, Jessa. Uh, so currently, uh, and, and as you guys probably are aware, guidelines change with this uh, sometimes frequently, but the, the current guidelines that we're asking all students to self-report um, their vaccine status. Uh, upon entry and coming into any of our facilities, you do have to show your response to blue. Uh, and the, with the recent response to blue update, that shows whether uh, the student or a person is vaccinated or not. Um, students who ha have not self-reported their vaccine and thus it doesn't show on the response to blue, uh, we're asking that they continue to wear a mask indoors. Um, however, if you have self-reported and that is shown on your response to blue, uh, you are free to use the facility without a mask. Do, do we all know what Responsa Blue is? Malcolm, can you give us a, a quick rundown about what that means? Sure, uh, Responsa Blue is the university's questionnaire. Um, I believe that it's app-based. Uh, you can do it through a website as well. Uh, and if you don't have either of those options, our desk have paper uh, questionnaires that you can fill out. Um, but it is provided through the university. university. You use your uh, UMIS credentials to log in. Uh, and then from there, they ask you a series of questions uh, to kind of uh, see what side of the fence you fall on. Uh, and then from there, uh, you'll either receive a green check mark or a, or a red X, um, which is kind of EHS telling you to, to seek further guidance. So um, it's just a self-assessment, the university self-assessment tool. Um, and it is available to, to both student staff and folks who aren't student and staffs, but who are using our facilities. They also can uh, sign in as a guest and use the assessment tool as well. Thanks, Malcolm. Uh, we have a question about where to shop for some of your gear on campus. Like maybe where do I buy soccer balls or boots or like things that I need in order to recreate? Um, I can talk a little bit about outdoor gear. Uh, we have uh, REI, a partnership with REI and work really closely with them. Uh, and there's one right next to one of our spaces in Ann Arbor. Uh, we also have a lot of gear providers and vendors uh, that we can send you to if you're looking for that really specific piece. But even better than that, we rent a ton of gear. So we have a rental center through Adventure Leadership uh, where you can rent, you can rent uh, like lawn games. People don't even realize that we have those. We have lawn games. We have like a tug of war thing. We have backpacks. We have boots. We have cross country skis. We have snowshoes. We have sleeping bags. We have tents. We have everything that you could possibly want to have a really great time in an outdoor adventure. Uh, but as far as, you know, like your cleats or your things like that, that's going to be something a little bit different. And is there anyone else that wants to take that one? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know if I'm going to actually answer the question fully, but one of the things that I would really encourage you to do is get familiar with the Ann Arbor transit system, the bus routes. There's, I was in the soccer ball and boots mindset. Like there's a, a bus that you can take down to Meyer, which for those of you who aren't in regionally located is a, a kind of a grocery store catch-all housewares things like that um so i just dropped the link to the ride.org your student id gets you free bus rides throughout the city so really cool option there's a target down there near the mire as well i actually don't know what's at our mall anymore there may be a sporting goods store there it's been a while since i've been out and about but that would be my recommendation is to just do some, also just some exploring around Ann Arbor um, with this free service that students receive. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, this isn't directly under our purview, but does anybody know when Yoast will be open again? No, no, no rumor mill out there that we can maybe shoot you to or a place we can send you to, uh, sorry. Anonymous attendee, we don't know about Yoast. I wish we could be helpful. <laughs> All right. Anything, anything else that's like, you know, burning in your brains that we can answer for you?
What's your favorite way to recreate? Like if you're like, Lexi, let's say that you have an hour in an evening and you want to like recreate, what does that look like for you? It's either a walk outside or some yoga for me. Um, I also still play fan volleyball in the summer. So I like, I like some variety, but yoga is my typical go-to, especially if I've had like a stressful day or a day where I've been in front of the computer a lot. I love how I feel after I get some stretching in and just some good breathing and meditation. When our group X classes that are on YouTube and stuff too are so, so great for that. I, I find myself utilizing those a ton. Malcolm, you're a pickup basketball player guy, right? That's right, that's right. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what that looks like in our gyms. Sure, um, as I said before, of course, just recently opened at the facility. So uh, gyms are a little bit crowded these days than usual, but that's a good thing. We haven't heard uh, you know, squeaks or balls bouncing for, in a long time. So uh, it's, a, it's a, a, a good thing to see, um, but they're, they're, uh, they're pretty competitive, you know, depending on the court, depending on the building. I would say uh, typically there's space for everyone to play, uh, no matter you know, male or female. Um, or, you know, a super advanced or just, you know, starting to pick up a basketball. Normally each court um, is, is kind of built around uh, the skill set of, of the player. So uh, even if you're not, you know, consider yourself a basketball player and you really just want to get out there and have fun, um, there are definitely a, a crowd of people out there for you to join. Uh, and it's always a good time. And, and for me, that's my favorite way to, to recreate. So um, I do recommend that. Awesome. Ben, I know I already asked you about like where people should visit if they're gonna visit a facility, but like, what's your rec of choice? Yeah, great question. Um, these days I'm, I'm very into functional fitness. Um, so I like to do my push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, squats, um, and all of our comprehensive facilities have space to do that. Um, so whether you're on central campus, um, you can visit to the IMSB or CCRB, or if you're up on North Campus, the NCRB, all those spaces have the type of equipment, you know, light equipment that you would want for a uh, functional fitness. Um, and I also like to jog. So I do want to mention that um, we do have two indoor tracks, um, one at the NCRB and one at the CCRB, and they're elevated above our basketball courts. So I really enjoy running on those because you, you kind of have something to look at instead of a wall when you're on a treadmill. Um, so definitely check those out if you're at those facilities. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. All right, Sibby. You've got that like hour. What are you doing to recreate? Yes, let me tell you. So when I was in undergrad, I was on a club team. I played women's rugby and I had no idea how to play at all when I first got to practice. And similar to here, they took me with open arms and taught me everything about the sport. And it was the best part of my undergrad experience, hands down. So I, I love clubs and I, <laughs> I love the experience that you get while you're in it. Even if you're just playing on the team, um, you can learn a completely different sport. And I still talk to the women that I played with um, back in undergrad and they're still really good friends of mine. So if you have no idea how to play rugby or fencing or ice hockey or any of that, uh, give it a shot and you, you could be a part of a, a community, a really great community um, of friends that you have for your whole life, probably. So that's my answer. So I feel like I've seen you like run in rugby drills occasionally out on some of those fields. Hey, you gotta, <laughs> it stays with you. Okay. It stays with you. Gotta ya. keep it sharp. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Well, I think that we're going to close it on that question. Uh, I want to say thank you all so much for submitting all of your awesome questions. It was really great to connect with you all. Uh, and I'll kick it to Lexi for our final word. Yeah, thanks, Jessa. And thanks to all my colleagues for joining today. These were some really great questions. And we hope you learned something. Hope you will check us out. And uh, I, it's been right in front of your face for a good chunk of this time. So don't forget to check our website, our app, and any of our social media for more info. Um, so thanks again. And we can't wait to see you on campus.